I have to confess I tend to get a bit excited when a motorcycle manufacturer announces they are releasing a cafe racer styled machine. I suppose it has something to do with me, unfortunately. Excitement often leads to disappointment when the cafe racers they release miss the mark when. The Kawasaki Z90RS Cafe was revealed I was suitably excited, but also feared the worst. Was I disappointed? A little confused maybe, but disappointed I certainly was not. Where does the confusion come from? It's the use of the word cafe in the bike's name that has me stumped, and I'm not the only one when I've posted. Images of the Z90 RS cafe on my social pages, there are usually one or two comments that are along the lines of how is this a cafe racer one? Particularly witty keyboard evangelist even wrote this is the first cafe racer I've seen where they've actually added parts and sorry Kawasaki, I have to agree. A fairing and lower handlebars does not macketh a cafe racer. Traditions and naming conventions aside, the Z90 RS Cafe is a great looking bike, it's got beautiful lines, an impeccable quality finish, and there's a great balance. Of modern and retro touches, sure it suffers from the same bloated fuel tank as the standard model, but there are very few angles where. It is really obvious, then there's bright green paint scheme which is also a point of contention for some. To be honest, I wasn't sold on it either. But the more time I spent with the bike, the more it appealed to me. This is strange because if you were to peruse my wardrobe, you'd find a white selection of black, gray, and not much else. Would I ever wear a t-shirt in this color? Definitely not. So why the change of heart? I can only put it down to how much I enjoy riding this bike. Despite the cafe having a slightly sportier aesthetic than the standard RS, there is no performance difference on paper, as explained in our ride review. The Z90 RS the bikes are built around a detuned version of the Supernake Z90 inline 4. Don't let that put you off though, this Kawasaki is. No slouch, there's still 110 horses waiting to be unleashed at the twist of the throttle. What Kawasaki has actually done is retune the engine to improve its readability in the city, the suburbs. On the freeway or through twisty country roads, this bike always delivers a manageable and more, importantly, enjoyable ride. Since I was reviewing practically the same bike again, I decided to do the same day trip I did on the standard Z90 RS, a decent 300 kilometers ride that covered both freeway and country road riding. Despite the change in handlebar height, the riding position on the cafe remains pretty much upright and I actually found the seat to be more comfortable. Since there isn't a huge difference in seating position, the handling is just as predictable as the RS and the Monoshock continues to do a great job of D. Ealing with bumps, the most notable difference I found between the two bikes was the increased comfort at freeway speeds thanks to the front fairing, so if you're planning on doing a lot of long-haul rides I'd recommend spending the extra money on the Kawasaki Z90 RS Cafe. The real source of inspiration is that the Z90 RS Cafe is essentially a restyle of the standard model RS, up front you get the bikini fairing and lower, flatter handlebars. The new seat features a sportier hump at the rear and the paintwork is unique to this model. There are also quite a few subtle differences that keep your focus on the bike's bodywork. The frame, for instance, is finished in a satin black paint rather than gloss. The wheels are all black aside from a thin green pinstripe and the front fender brackets, radiator surround and side covers all follow suit, they've even gone so far as to take the shine off the exhaust by opting for a brushed stainless look rather than chrome plating and it looks great. As I already stated, this look doesn't scream Cafe Racer to me though. What it does scream is KZ100R. The KZ100R was a limited production model that Kawasaki built in 1981. It was a street-going replica of AMA title winner Eddie Lawson's track bike, the KZ100R featured. A swooping tailpiece, small front fairing and bright green livery sound familiar. 
Z90RS aftermarket options. Since the Z90RS has been around for a while now, I thought I'd quickly take a look at what the custom parts market is looking like. Obviously, Japanese manufacturers are leading the way since they got the bikes first, and there is now a great range available online through Webake. Many of the parts are aimed at pushing the Z's retro styling further with bolt-on replacement parts for things like badges, engine covers, lights, and fender eliminator kits. The most exciting aftermarket developments though are these two exhaust systems, one comment that echoed across the Kawasaki forums when the Z90RS was unveiled was that a Z1 Ahmed should have fur mufflers, production costs were most likely the reason this didn't happen. Thankfully, in the aftermarket world, anything can be done if you're willing to spend the dollars. The first system takes a more modern styling approach and is by Hadek in German. The Hadek for can be purchased as a full or half system that is actually a four to fur setup which is street legal in Europe. It'll set you back around three. 300 euros for the full system or 2300 for the half system the second exhaust system is by japanese workshop doremi n is an almost exact replica of the original z1 system available in either chrome or black it retails for 2720 dollars aud 